as far away from that as possible here. Why did the Heat make Olenek a priority? Well, his ability to shoot the ball, spread the floor. Kelly Olenek, you know, we reported a four-year, around $50 million deal. Uh, he may have had a couple things that would have paid him a little more. What sold it for him, he was at his agent, Greg Lawrence's house in L.A. yesterday. Got on the phone with Eric Spolstra and just hit it off with Spolstra in a way that he hung up the phone and said, that's where I want to play, get a deal done there. Interesting. So he heads to Miami now, a team that swung and missed on Gordon Hayward, but they land Kelly Olynyk here. Meantime, one of the most interesting signings of the day on Thursday, my buddy Fran Schill has been singing <laughs> the praises of this next guy for years and years. We want to introduce America to Milos Teodosic, Serbian point guard with a whole lot of creativity. He's impressed at the Rio Olympics. Boy, did he ever helping Serbia get to the gold medal game 2016 Olympics. How about creativity? Gorgeous feed between DeMarcus Cousins and Paul George. And then Teodosic, creative off the bounce as well into the lane. That, that may have been the pass of the Olympics to Bogdan Bogdanovic, who knocks it down. Serbia, again, would lose in the gold medal game, but taking home the silver was almost as good as taking gold for that nation. He played for CSKA Moscow in the EuroLeague Championship 2016. He's such a creative passer. Got the great Euro beard going as well. FIBA European Player of the Year in 2010, and then again in 2016. And then we're gonna we're gonna let you see the best of the best of Milos's mixtape. Here we goes. One-handed passes. Boom. Won a 2014 silver medal at the FIBA World Cup, averaged 16 points, seven assists. Last season in Moscow, he's creative, he's electric, he's exciting. He's coming to the LA Clippers, a point guard with a whole lot of creativity, Woj. He, he ends up in LA, why the Clippers? They, they really targeted him and uh, Patrick Beverly, I talked to, he, he's the new Clipper guard, came in the Chris Paul deal. Patrick Beverly and, uh, uh, and Teodosic played together in Greece seven years ago. Then they played against each other in Russia. Patrick Beverly said to me today, he is the best passer in the NBA wow. right now. And also, Beverly also said, I've got to change my hotel alias now. Right. He went by Milos Teodosic. And so he, he's got to come up with a new one. Yeah, exactly. Like, like uh, maybe Chris Paul. There you go. That, but, <laughs> I mean, is that obviously no one's going to be Chris Paul there in Los Angeles. But how, how's the fit work with what they have? Well, listen, he's not going to be a superstar in the NBA. He is fun to watch. He is a talented guy. He's not going to defend at all. As great as Pat, he's a good compliment for Patrick Beverly, who's a tenacious defender. Uh, he'll be a, uh, a good player for them, and the highlights are going to be great. You'll see some great lobs, uh, but this isn't a transformative talent. He, but he's, he's great on the mixtape. He's great in the highlights. And, like, you will get your money's worth watching him play every night. Maybe a little Ricky Rubio flair to him. Uh, we, absolutely. We shall see exactly. Great stuff always. Adrian Wojnarowski hanging us here on SportsCenter. Hey, guys, not sure you heard, but Thursday's the new Friday. So we got must-see... Welcome back. Some news from the NBA Thursday that didn't involve Max Steels. And you know, come to think of it for this story, th th this logo, it just isn't going to work. Do we have anything? Uh, I'm wondering, do we have anything? Yeah, that'll do. 39-year-old um, Dirk Nowitzki agreed to a two-year deal with Dallas. And 40-year-old Vince Carter is coming back on a one-year deal with Sacramento. Both are returning for their 20th seasons. They'll be the two oldest players in the league. Nat Hickey is the oldest all-time at 45. Here now, an eight-minute feature on the greatest set shots by 40-year-old men who could once dunk. Or something else. Like maybe something along the lines of this. Dirk and Vince Carter, the only two active players remaining from the 1998 draft, and their longevity has paid off. Both rank in the top three among active scoring leaders. Dirk is sixth on the all-time list, VC 22nd. By the way, he's 638 points shy of passing Jerry West, the logo, to move into the top 20 in NBA history. How about Dirk's Mavs and Summer League action Thursday taking on the Pistons? By the way, Vince Carter was broadcasting this one. And then Lorenzo Brown did deals. Five seconds left in the third round. Oh! He put Dick in the hoop! 
That is how you earn a 50 from me right there. And coming from a dude who put together the sickest dunk contest exhibition of all time, that's not bad. Overtime, Pistons down three, inbounding the rock. They get it to Luke Kennard. Got it. Now, we got to break down the play here. Keith Hornsby is the son of singer Bruce Hornsby. He's trying to defend Kennard, but listen to Mavs coach Mike Weiner yelling about Kennard. He got it, nailed the big one. He had a team high 24. 6.7 seconds to go. Jonathan Motley inside the paint. Turns out to be the game winner. Dallas went 5-0 and in the Orlando Summer League. Motley at 18-10. and A Motley crew to say the least. They win it 83-81. So, you know, Gordon Hayward burned Utah to join Brad Stevens in Boston. Thursday, the Jazz and Celtics played. Winner gets Jay Crowder. And boy, they, they're not entirely forgiving in Salt Lake about Gordon Stayward. Nope, cross it out. Ainge, another reason to hate BYU. And then we will never forget you, number 20, Howard. Maybe the most creative out of all of them. Jason Tatum, Donovan Mitchell. These two went at it. First round picks both. Mitchell, some move, and then it's Tatum's turn. Backing him down. That is like shades of dirt right there. Tatum didn't shoot it well throughout. He was 4 of 12 in the field, but he had 12 points and 12 rebounds. Now, fourth quarter, tied at 60. Tatum, third overall pick. Mitchell, 13th overall pick, guarding him. Watch Mitchell poke it away, and then ew, a little extracurricular stuff going on. In the in the summer league in July, I dig it. Ensuing possession, Mitchell laughs last. One on one, the spinner inside and the hammer. Julian Wright from Donovan Mitchell and Tatum was on his backside. Oh my, play of this week. That got the attention of Joe Ingles. Huh? He got busy on Twitter. Donovan, hand clap, why not? Julian Wright finished it off. Someone call an orthopedic surgeon. Jazz win at 68, 65. Mitchell had eight points. Pistons taking on the Mavericks, Orlando Summer League Championship. Vince Carter on the call, closing seconds of the third quarter. Lorenzo Brown does this. Five seconds left in the third round. Oh, he put King in the hoop. That is how you earn a 50 from me right there. Oh, Brown impressing Vincenity with the dunk. He knows a thing or two about earning 50s dunking the basketball. That was just Lorenzo rolling in a Benzo. Yes, 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 right yes. that lane. I'm leaving all that alone. Overtime now. Pistons down 81-78. Detroit inbounding. Kennard! Luke nails a three to tie, but we're going to break down the play. Keith Hornsby, son of singer Bruce Hornsby, tried to defend Kennard. That's just the way it is. Mavs coach Mike Weiner saw Kennard break it open. <laughs> He saw it. No, Kennard, no! Kennard had 24, 6.7 seconds to play. Mav tried to go inside, going to Jonathan Motley. Game winning jumper right there. Great pass. And Motley, cool, calm, collected. 18 points, 10 boards. Mavs win 83 81 and are the champions of the Orlando Summer League. You can right. dance. It's all right. From Orlando to Salt Lake City, NBA Summer League continuing. Jazz fans still hating on Gordon Hayward for leaving. Signs. Howard. Scared now. of the West. Stop it. I love Ainge. Another reason to hate BYU. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. We'll never forget you, Howard. That's funny, too. All right. To the game. It's all about the young stars on the rise this week. Jason Tatum, Donovan Mitchell, both taken in the first round. Tatum third out of Duke. Mitchell 13th out of Louisville. Ooh, that shot is so pretty. That step back by Tatum. He is turning heads. Double-double with 12 points, 4 of 12 shooting and 12 boards. Then in the fourth, tied at 60, Tatum-Mitchell matchup. And, and Mitchell said he wanted, he specifically asked to guard Tatum. Look at the defense. Physicality there. I like it. Jazz fans in the arena.
Loving it. Little stare down. No one backing down. Mitchell going one on one with Tatum. Take a listen. Mitchell. Tatum. One on one. The spinner. Inside. And the hammer. Julian Wright. From Donovan Mitchell. And Tatum was on his backside. Oh, my. Play of this week. A lot of the Jazz players have gone to Twitter, reacting, watching the young Jazz rookies on the floor during summer league action. And Donovan, your thoughts? You know, anytime you play a guy who's the top pick, everybody's coming for him. And I just, same thing with yesterday, I didn't get the opportunity with my, my good friend of mine, Markel, so I just wanted to go out there and just show up to play defense today. Kind of all happened so fast, but it's just it's in the flow of the game, and it's definitely a spark. You know, we, we didn't really have energy in the first half, so I just wanted to make my presence felt. I wasn't really hitting shots. I didn't really have a great offensive game, but like I said, the defense travels, so it's, you just got to make sure you have a great defensive game, even if shots aren't falling. What an approach by the young man. Intensity on the defensive side. If the shot's not falling, Mitchell did finish with eight points, four steals. The Jazz get the win, 68-65, to 65. and after the game, Utah tweeting out these images of Donovan Mitchell with the message, get used to it. Oh, 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 oh. Wow, that's actually pretty cool for it an is. organization that, that's still a little hurt from uh, the last couple of days. They need something. I mean, they've got some players, but they need something. I think they have yeah. something. Uh, let's welcome in. We have something. Mike Wise of the Undefeated. Good to have you here, my Thank brother. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, we have seen some really good summer league action. Vegas starts tonight. What are you most looking forward to? Well, oh, Lonzo Ball. Yeah. I mean, the the w the first true point guard in what I think uh, I don't know five years where I say he can he pass first. He's all about getting people involved. Um, I. I bet that his dad's going to be there. It would be a shocker if he isn't, but I bet be his right. dad is. Might be right on that one. Uh, I'm impressed that we went 25 seconds with that answer before. <laughs> yeah. So, well but anyway, by you. Yeah, thank you. But I, but no, I, I look this this kid. I'm really excited to see him tonight. And and I think even more, Jack. Three days from now, or excuse me, not three games from now. It's going to be Lonzo Ball versus De'Aaron Fox, Sac Kings versus yeah. Lakers. I think that's a great matchup. Everybody saw it in the tournament, and people want to see it again in the summer league. Everybody Absolutely. also heard so. the trash talk co coming out of that, including yeah. the fathers back yes. and forth yep. following that game. All right, let's go to the Knicks. And last night. Do we have to? Yeah, well, we do. Yeah. Well, they made news here. Yes, I know. And, and then the headline you see is, holy sheep <laughs> in the New York Daily I News. Four years, $71 million offer sheet with uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. Knicks already have Courtney Lee on their roster. What yeah. do you think of their decision to make Hardaway this offer, a guy that they drafted now they're trying to bring back? I think they're doing, they're doing everything that Phil Jackson didn't do during his tenure. This is the first post-Phil move, so to speak. It's not a huge move. I, don't, I, don't, I think they're still in many ways, not in disarray, but I don't think anything is going to really start moving for them roster-wise. And what I mean by that is what do you do with Carmelo Anthony until they interview David Griffin, uh, the GM candidate, former Cleveland Cavaliers GM, and get somebody in that position to help Steve Mills decide what to do with this franchise and James Dolan. Hardaway's gotten better each year. What, what do you think of him as a player? I like him. Um, I, I like him. I just don't think he's a game changer, Jay. I think he's one of these guys that you, you, if he's your... If he's your fifth best starter on a playoff team, that's a decent team. If he's your third best player, I, th I don't think you're going anywhere. It's, it's remarkable when, when we talk about the terms, too, and the money that he gets a, a $71 million offer sheet wow. for four years. But that's the way of the NBA and yes, locking yes. these guys down and, and making sure you get role players here just in case the save face here. This mellow decision, how critical is it for the Knicks moving forward the next three months to figure this out if they don't? figure it out well, I, I don't see them being any kind of contender even in the Eastern Conference believe it or not this year so I don't think they have to do it right away I think they're gonna get some takers at some point the biggest thing is and I, and I spoke to a Knicks uh, a Knicks official yesterday they they have not heard from Carmelo Anthony everybody says that he wants to wave a no trade clause and possibly go to Cleveland or Houston which mm -hmm. It's still a mind-boggling thing because he didn't get along with uh, Mike D'Antoni when he was in New York. But I, don't, I just don't think it's going to be as t paramount as everybody thinks because 
you know, Carmelo Anthony still is an asset. He's not a liability mm -hmm. for them. And I, if I'm if I'm them, I try to sell them on, hey, you're here with Porzingis. Phil was probably your main problem. <laughs> Why don't you try and stick around and see if you can get somebody here? In another offense, too. Yeah, right. in another offense. That's That would be my thought. And, and people in New York, for, they have a love-hate relationship with Carmelo. They wish he would play one end of the floor, but they love that he plays the other. <laughs> that is true. He plays the other really well. <laughs> he does. And likewise, going to be back in the 9 a.m.